Good morning, my name is Maureen Chung. Welcome to Daily Devotional of March the 27th. The passage is Mark chapter 14, verse 12 to 26. Parallel passage is Matthew chapter 26, verse 17 to 30. The title is The Lord's Supper. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, when it was customary to sacrifice the Passover lamb, Jesus' disciples asked him, Where do you want us to go and make preparations for you to eat the Passover? So he sent two of his disciples, telling them, Go into the city and a man carrying a jar of water will meet you. Follow him. Say to the owner of the house he enters, The teacher asks, Where is my guest room, where I may eat the Passover with my disciple? He will show you a large room upstairs, furnished and ready. Make preparations for us there. The disciples left, went into the city, and found things just as Jesus had told them. So they prepared the Passover. Then evening came. Jesus arrived with the twelve. While they were reclining at the table eating, he said, Truly I tell you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They were saddened, and one by one they said to him, Surely you don't mean me? It is one of the twelve, he replied, one who dips bread into the bowl with me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. And in Matthew chapter 26, verse 25, it says, Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely not I, Rabbi? Jesus answered, Yes, it is you. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples, saying, Take it. This is my body. Then he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, and they all drank from it. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. He said to them, Truly, I tell you, I will not drink again from the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. When they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. During Lent, we spent time with Jesus on the Thursday of the Passion Week. He and his disciples are now sleeping. Overnight, on the Mount of Olives, most likely in the Garden of Gethsemane. On Wednesday, the only recorded event is about Judas seeking an opportunity to betray Jesus. And after this, all four Gospels move the narration to the Last Supper on Thursday. Let us join them. It is significant that Jesus should die on Passover. John the Baptist, under the illumination of the Holy Spirit, did call Jesus the Lamb of God. This goes all the way back to the recording in Exodus about the first Passover when God's angels killed all firstborn sons in Egyptian homes. The only way of escape was to paint the blood of a killed lamb on the doorposts and door frames, which provided a covering of protection for the firstborns inside to be spared from death. Angels passed over these households marked by the blood of the lamb. Meanwhile, the families were to eat the cooked lambs at home and be ready to leave Egypt once they received the go-ahead from God's servant Moses. Thus, they exited Egypt to go to Canaan, their promised homeland. This symbolizes their deliverance 
from captivity and slavery and our deliverance from the captivity by Satan and alive and trapped by sin. Freedom from bondage comes from the shed blood of the Lamb killed on Passover. Jesus Christ is the ultimate fulfillment of the Passover Lamb. At the Lord's Supper, or the Last Supper, Jesus is the host who prepared the Passover feast for his disciples. He made all the arrangements, from the location of the meal to the people who would be doing the cooking. His disciples are invited to enjoy the meal and his presence together. I can see a correlation to our present experience. Salvation comes at a cost to him alone. We just enjoy his provision and his fellowship with us as his chosen disciples. We share a table of intimate conversation and listen to his heartbeat, his hopes and dreams for his church. It is a privilege and an honor. Sweet Jesus, I do enjoy the moment. We saw yesterday in the Gospel of John, chapter 13, about Jesus getting up from the meal, taking off his outer clothing, wrapping a towel around his waist, pouring water into a basin, washing his disciples' feet, and drying them with the towel that was wrapped around him. The disciple John describes this sequence with fond memories. The host Jesus not only pays for the meal, but also takes on the role of the lowest household slave in making his guests comfortable. He does everything out of love for them. I can imagine the intimate touch of Jesus' hands massaging my tired, mud-clad feet. A slave can serve without love, but a true lover has it in him to serve. Twelve pairs of dirty feet he washed, including those of his betrayer, Judas's. Amazing love. Amazing grace. Listen to their conversation. Jesus. I tell you the truth, one of you will betray me. One who is eating with me. What the disciples say. Surely not I. Jesus says. It is one of the twelve one who dips bread into the bowl with me, the Son of Man will go just as it is written about him. But woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. And then Judas says, Surely not I, Rabbi? Jesus says, Yes, it is you. Any normal person would be taken aback by Jesus' revelation. In a moment of intimate fellowship with Jesus, he discloses the imminent betrayal by his close friend. All ask, surely not I? And Judas feels compelled to ask that too. But Jesus' answer cannot be more direct. Yes, it is you. Instead of holding back from his devious plan, Judas continues his treacherous way. He leaves the room to meet up with the Jewish religious leaders whom he will lead to the Garden of Gethsemane for Jesus' arrest. Why? Stubbornness, anger, pride, Disillusionment? Greed? He does not want to repent and retract. Jesus breaks the bread that represents his body to be broken. With the hands that will soon be nail pierced, he breaks the bread to feed the hunger of his friends. In this action, he proves true his own words 
recorded in John chapter 6, verse 35. I am the bread of life. He who comes to me will never go hungry, and he who believes in me will never be thirsty. Then Jesus raises up the cup, saying, This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you the truth, I will not drink again of it, of the fruit of the vine, until that day when I drink it anew in the kingdom of God. The old covenant was ushered in by Moses' law, as given by God on Mount Sinai. The Ten Commandments were carved on tablets of stone. The New Covenant is ushered in by Jesus Christ, who shed his blood for the forgiveness of our sins. He is the ultimate sacrificial lamb that atones for our sins upon the bronze altar. He is the fulfillment of the temple sacrifices throughout the ages. By believing in his redemptive act, we are spared and forgiven. We have spoken of him as the Passover lamb. He is also the sacrificial lamb on the altar. With the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, he writes his law on our hearts, so we remember him, the Lamb of God. Jesus states in John chapter 6, verse 54 to 56, Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise him up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me, and I in him. This is our present life with Jesus. As we remember him with loving gratitude, every time we come to the Lord's Supper, in summary, the past observance is the Passover and the temple sacrifices. The present observance is remembering Christ's sacrifice as we participate in the Lord's Supper. We also wait for the future when we will eat and drink with him in the heavenly kingdom of God. That will be the wedding banquet of the Lamb as Christ receives his bride his church for eternity. Revelation chapter 19 verse 7 to 9 foretells this day of celebration according to the scene revealed to the Apostle John. Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory, for the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. Fine linen stands for the righteous acts of God's holy people. Then the angel said to me, Write this, Blessed are those who are invited to the wedding supper of the Lamb. And he added, These are the true words of God. This is our everlasting hope. Praise the Lord. Do you look forward to that day? The heavenly banquet with the Lamb of God? I do. And may God bless you abundantly. Thank you for joining me. See you tomorrow. Please like and subscribe to my channel and click the bell icon to get new video updates. Thank you.